Thank you for allowing me to talk today. I am Amy Luckenbaugh. I'm one of the urologic oncologists at Vanderbilt, and I'm going to talk uh, briefly about muscle invasive bladder cancer, non muscle invasive bladder cancer, sorry. Um, I have no disclosures relevant to this talk, and here is a brief overview of where we'll be going throughout the talk today. Um, I will try to breeze quickly through this because we know this, but bladder cancer is the fourth most common malignancy among men. It is not in the top 10 among women. Um, and as we all know, um, smoking is one of the number one risk factors for this, as well as um, bladder irritation, prior pelvic radiation, and other um, risk factors such as that. Uh, bladder cancer it remains the eighth most common cause of cancer death among men. Um, and, but the majority of the tumors that we find are non-muscle invasive at diagnosis. And so that's what I'm going to talk about today is the non-muscle invasive bladder cancers. Um, when we are evaluating a bladder tumor, it is important to do a thorough cystoscopic exam of the bladder. Um, that includes the whole bladder, not just the area with the tumor. Um, we will resect the whole tumor if possible. Um, and potentially perform upper tract imaging, whether that be with a CT urogram, which is the ideal standard of care. But if their creatinine is too low, um, proceeding with renal ultrasound um, or an MR urogram and retrograde pilograms might be an option as well. Um, for particularly bulky tumors, we should continue doing a bimanual exam under anesthesia. And then if there is a normal cystoscopy, but an abnormal cytology, um, we should consider doing prostatic urethral biopsies evaluating both upper tracts and potentially doing an enhanced cystoscopy. So what is enhanced cystoscopy? Um, this is now blue light cystoscopy. It usually utilizes a photosensitizer that improves the detection of all tumors. Um, according to the AUA guidelines, it is a grade B recommendation to go ahead and do this and offer this to patients. Um, it has improved detection for um, CIS and T1 and it can lead to fewer recurrences at 12 months. Um, importantly, there are false positive rate um, detections, and that typically occurs with inflammation, urinary tract infections, or recent BCG. I currently offer this to patients, um, but I, I tend to really push patients to do it if they have carcinoma in situ, um, if they are post uh, BCG, and this is our first restaging TURBT, um, or uh, any positive cytology with no clear reason. Another type of enhanced cystoscopy is narrowband imaging. Um, and this looks at highly vascular tissue under a different light. It does not require any intravesical agent like a blue light cystoscopy does. Um, and that is one of the advantages of this. Um, however, there is some controversy whether it does uh, have any difference in detection or lower recurrence of bladder cancer. So we have talked up now about um, diagnosis and evaluation and we'll go on to staging. Um, today I will only cover the non-muscle invasive disease, so that is carcinoma in situ, TA, and T1. Um, TA represents the majority of what we find and it represents 70 percent of patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, with 20% being T1 and 10% being carcinoma in situ. Um, in my talk, I think this might be the one of the most important slides and most important aspects of non-muscle invasive bladder care. And it is to take into account which AUA risk group um, patients go into. Um, it really depends on the grade, the size of the tumor, the stage, whether there's lymphovascular invasion, and this affects their prognosis um, as well as their chance of recurrence and progression. Um, in general, low-risk patients include those um, with low-grade small tumors. Intermediate-risk patients are those with larger low-grade tumors um, or with a solitary high-grade TA. And then high-risk patients are those with high-grade T1, um, large high-grade TA, and carcinoma in situ, as well as any variant histology. And again, this is, I think, a really important um, slide and something to do for each patient. Um, for low-grade TA, the risk of recurrence is about 50%, but it has a low risk of progression of about 5%. Um, the majority who do recur come back within one year of TURBT, and so a complete resection is important. Um, for those with low risk, um, low-grade, 
um, disease, I tend to favor a post-operative um, intravesical chemotherapy like uh, gemcitabine or mitomycin C. If they have intermediate risk low-grade disease, however, then you could consider doing um, an induction course of intravesical chemotherapy. Um, if that does not work, you could consider BCG. For those with high-grade TA disease, these would be in the intermediate or high-risk category, depending how large the tumor was. Um, you, can, you should consider repeat resection, especially for large tumors, and um, do induction BCG um, plus maintenance. If they have a small tumor and it is intermediate risk high grade, they should get 12 months of maintenance BCG. And for those with high risk high grade disease, they should get 36 months of maintenance BCG. T1, um, the rates of recurrence are higher, up to 70%, and progression is higher, up to 30%. And you must perform a repeat TURBT in these patients because 40% of them can be understaged at the initial time of TURBT. Um, and then for these patients, we should do induction BCG and maintenance if it is successful. Um, for patients who undergo induction BCG, we should redo a TURBT after that, about four to six weeks after completion, to ensure there is no disease. And then there's a category of those with T1 who have high volume disease, carcinoma in situ, or any variant histology, and they really um, should be considered to have an upfront or early cystectomy. Carcinoma in situ, um, the majority of these have a positive cytology. Um, and again, you treat this with induction BCG and 36 months of maintenance BCG. You have a lower risk uh, of recurrence and progression with BCG. However, um, recurrent CIS can be a bad player and 10 years, 20% uh, of patients with carcinoma in situ will die from urothelial carcinoma. So although it looks not invasive, um, it is something that should be taken quite seriously. And then there are special cases, which I alluded to, those with variant histology, especially high volume variant histology, even if it is non-muscle invasive, you should talk to patients about early cystectomy. The pathology should be reviewed by a GU pathologist. And if you are gonna do bladder sparing, you should re-resect all of these patients prior to doing that. Um, here is the general schematic for treatment, um, low risk, low grade disease. You can observe or do a post-operative intravesical chemo. Um, high grade TA disease, you can do intravesical chemo if it's a small tumor or BCG. And high grade T1 um, BCG is the standard of care. Um, so we have talked about all of these and now I'm gonna go into detail um, about intravesical chemotherapy. Um, there are a bunch of options for intravesical chemotherapy, including mitomycin, gemcitabine, um, and these have a direct cytotoxic effect on um, cancer cells. It decreases recurrence by about 14%, but it does not alter progression. And there are a few ways to do this. One option is to administer a single dose after TURBT within six to 24 hours, and it reduces recurrence by 13% for a single tumor and 56% for multiple tumors. And the other option is for those with um, low-grade intermediate risk disease, doing an induction course, which can reduce uh, recurrence by 14 to 38%. And lastly, if you have success with an induction course, you could consider doing monthly maintenance. Um, these patients, you know, they tend to have lower urinary tract symptoms um, and, and may have decreased bladder capacity and increased skin irritation. Um, the two major types that I'll talk about are mitomycin C, which is an alkylating agent. Um, you give 40 milligrams and 20 milliliters of sterile water. It reduces recurrence for those with low-grade cancer if given post-op. However, it can have some pretty significant lower urinary tract symptoms. And for that reason, um, gemcitabine is kind of coming into favor. Um, it reduces recurrence by somewhere between 39 to 70%. Um, and it tends to be tolerated better than mitomycin C. Um, this was the randomized trial um, evaluating gemcitabine versus placebo. Um, they, in, at four years, found 35% of patients in the gemcitabine group um, had, recur had recurrence where 47% in the control group did. 
Um, and, and this was a significant difference. There was no difference in risk of progression. It was still very low, but, and there were importantly no difference in grade three or less side effects and no grade four or five complications. And so gemcitabine was tolerated as well as placebo. We've spoken um, about intravesical chemotherapy and I'll go on to talk about BCG. Um, this is an attenuated live vaccine that you instill into the bladder um, and it can completely cure CIS and it reduces recurrence. Um, it works by activating the immune system to cause T cells to attack abnormal urothelium. And it is better for those with high risk, high grade disease um, and should be given to those patients. Um, it can be given initially four weeks after TURBT, and you should give it once a week for six weeks and then afterwards reevaluate with a cystoscopy and cytology to look for uh, effect. If there is an effect, um, if or if it has recurred, you could consider an initial induction course. However, you need to tell patients there is about a 20 to 25 percent chance they have success with that second induction course but there is also a 20% chance they could progress while getting that induction course. Maintenance BCG should be given if there's success at three and six months, and then every six months for one to three years. One year is for those patients with intermediate risk disease, and three years is for those with high risk disease. It reduces recurrence and progression. Um, in a BCG shortage, um, we favor giving induction courses and holding off on maintenance. Alternatively, you can reduce maintenance doses and you can favor um, giving maintenance BCG in those with high risk, high grade disease and, and foregoing maintenance BCG in those with intermediate risk disease. So we've covered um, BCG and now, you know, one of the most frustrating things about non-muscle invasive bladder cancer is the recurrence. And so for those who are refractory or BCG is not working. These are the options. Um, there are a bunch. Cystectomy, uh, single agent chemotherapies, combination chemotherapies, pembrolizumab, and I will touch on these over the last few minutes. Um, I want to emphasize timely cystectomy is really important. Um, there is a significant risk of understaging patients with T1, and 50% of people who undergo cystectomy for T1 actually have muscle invasion. So you should really consider this for variant histology, high grade, high volume T1, recurrent T1, and CIS. We can give intravesical gemcitabine and docetaxel to patients who have evidence of recurrence or refractory disease after BCG, and this has a recurrence-free survival at two years of about 46%, so quite successful. We can also give um, intravesical instiladrin. Um, this was just recently published. Um, this is a replication-deficient adenovirus, which delivers interferon into the bladder epithelium, and it helps um, triggers this response. And for patients with unresponsive non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, they had quite a bit of success. This is a single dose, and then it's repeated at three, six, and nine months. Um, again, you can see here that about at one year, overall 30.5% of patients had no evidence of recurrence of their refractory uh, BCG disease. Pembrolizumab is another option, which was just recently approved, again, for BCG unresponsive disease with up to a 41% complete response rate and can be uh, considered for BCG unresponsive disease. Finally, um, there are emerging therapies. Um, I know of some non-muscle invasive bladder cancers uh, trials at, at Vanderbilt. One is BCG combined with Altor, which is an interleukin. Um, it is administered weekly like BCG is um, for six weeks and then with maintenance courses. Um, this is currently enrolling and we do have had some success um, with this treatment. So that is an option here in Tennessee. And a new upcoming option which has not begun enrolling is a gemcitabine eluting pretzel um, which will we put in the bladder and then you give it gives off gemcitabine over time. Um, this is going to be randomized with an immunotherapy in combination or alone, and it is not yet open for enrollment. Um, these are just two of the emerging therapies. There are many more, but I will not have time to talk about those today. But overall, um, I want to emphasize it's important to risk stratify patients using the AUA risk categories because it helps guide treatment strategies and decisions. 
you should always consider, consider timely cystectomy in the appropriate patient, even for non-muscle invasive disease, such as those with variant histology, recurrent high-grade T1, and CIS. And the last thing is um, the landscape of treatment options for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer is rapidly changing, and there are new agents every day that show promise. Thank you.